Hello and welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. Now check that out behind me. What an incredible sunrise. But also, can you see the mist running down off the hills there? That's almost quite eerie, isn't it? You can see the fog rolling along the top of the cliff and then down and into the sea. What better way to start the day? Don't get any better than that here. I've come to an area of reef and what I'm going to do is I've got about another three quarters of an hour of the tide and then I'm going to anchor it up and I'm going to fish all of the flood. So it's very calm now as you can see it's like glass. The wind's due to pick up in a bit so I'll have kind of wind diagonally across tide. That's why I'm waiting because if I anchored up now I would be drifting in one direction and then in three quarters of an hour's time I would move around and then I would go in the other direction. That's a snag. <laughs> right, as I was saying, I'm fishing with lures while I've still got a little bit of tide as I wait for the tide to turn. All I'm doing is on this rod, I'm fishing like a soft plastic which I had just casted out into the tide to try and let it drift it will just come over a peak and I got snagged on it and on the other rod I'm fishing a slow jig just messing about at the minute to be honest trying for a uh, Sneaky codling, that type of thing. And then when we put the anchor down, we'll see what else we can find. Not the target species, but still very nice to see. A big spotty Ballinrass. They are stunning, aren't they? Look at them teeth in there. I don't know if you can see it. What a beauty. Yeah, not what I wanted to catch, but when they're this good looking, I don't mind catching them. One last look. Say goodbye. Drift slowed right down to 0.4 knots. So within the next half an hour, I think we'll be putting the anchor down. Whoa, I'm excited already. Well, another Ballon Ras and 
They've absolutely smashed this low, look. Oh, easy, easy. Look, they've just chewed it to pieces. They've just bitten the tail off. Look how smashed up it is with them teeth. It's a good thing about these is you can take the tail off and put a new one on. So yeah, that's what it was before. That's what it is now. <laughs> Tide's almost finished. We'll go and put the anchor down now. Consider that as being the last fish of the drift. All you do is you take the head, take the lure. You want to know where it's going to come out. So it's going to come out where my thumbs are. And you just push it down through the lure. Like that. Let's go and get the anchor down. No matter how much money someone's got, you can't buy manners, can you? Or common sense for that matter. Alright, what we're doing now is the tide's just slackened off and I'm just getting ready to put the anchor down. Because we're anchoring in rough ground, I'm going to be using a grapple anchor and it's rigged with a weak link so it can trip out backwards. If anybody's wanting more information on how I anchor up on hard ground and soft ground, check out the anchoring video. I'll tag it in here. Anyway, I'm in 60 feet of water so I'm expecting to put out around about 120 to 150 feet of rope. Um, not much more to it. I'll get the anchor down, I'll get a swung round and then we'll get set up. I've just put the anchor down and I'm waiting for us to swing in, into position. And I just flicked out that little pink lure again. Coddling. Now, for me, that is legal size. For me, it's too small. Get a photo of him and let him go. Good. Right, I finally got myself sat where I want to anchor and all I've done is I've got two rods out the back and I'm using very simple running ledgers nothing more complicated than this it's literally your main line with a zip slider and a lead on and a hook length of 80 pound mono what's that three foot long ending in an 8-0 meat hook now the baits that I've been using is I got some fresh mackerel yesterday, so I'm using that squid and cart. Anybody that doesn't know what cart is, I the um, best way to describe it is it's um, brown crab. It's a bait that's used an awful lot when fishing for cod on rough ground. We are in rough ground and there are cod here, so I thought I'd try it. Um, so far, just some little tiny rattling pecking bites with some shummings pouting. We will, uh, I'll put a little tiny scratching rig on and I'll see if I can't find what's giving me them bites. But the fish that we're looking for, conga, huss and cod. Whether we find any, <laughs> that's another matter. There's a bite. Well, that's unusual. That gave me a proper positive bite then. It's a great big spider crab. That gave a proper positive bite as well. Yeah. That must have been properly running off with that bait. <laughs> Cheeky sod. Right, there we go. Female spider crab.
There's the rig, like I said. Three feet to an eight oh, and on this one I put some fresh mackerel. Literally all I've done is I took some fillets off the side of a mackerel, sliced them up, just put them on in slithers. And there's the rig. No more complicated than that. Sliding ledger, this is eight ounces, with a running ledger. People have asked me, what size swivels do I use? My answer is, in the winter, big ones. Simply because when your fingers are numb, it's easier to work with bigger swivels. It doesn't put the fish off and it makes your life a lot easier. <laughs> Spider crab. This here in this bag are little wraps of cart. Now it is not a strong bait, it's very soft, very mushy. If you keep it in cling film like this you can see how pliable and mushy it is. So you can't put this straight on a hook. What I'll usually do, I have got a better video showing baiting up using cart on one of my shore videos. I'll take a squid and if you slice it open down the middle you can use it, you can open it up like that, flat. You put your cart inside and you wrap the squid around it like a little jacket. I'll knock a bait up and I'll show you. That is a nice, big, juicy cart bait. Like that. So, it's a piece of cart wrapped in squid. And the scent that comes off it is just massive. It's like a cloud. On this rod, all I've been fishing Because it's lighter and I've been holding it in my hand a lot, on this rod all I've been fishing is a rolling lead, but quite a heavy one, like a four ounce rolling lead. See this is, <laughs> this is why you need big swivels. Like a four ounce rolling lead, straight onto my main line. just been dropping it down. Now we have, I have had to put out a stern anchor. We would be we would be aiming in that direction but I've got a forward anchor out and I've got a stern anchor out so we're sitting quite like almost diagonal across the tide now. Because the wind keeps picking up I've had to put two anchors out to keep us in position. There's a bite. I have tried to put a GoPro down on the seabed to try and show you what's down there. I don't know if it'll have worked. If it has, I'll put it in here now.
not as much. Unless a spotted dogfish. Thought that when it was heavy light, heavy light, they do that, they, they roll up in the water. Another dingo dogfish. Absolutely destroyed a big cat and squid bait. Those baits aren't meant for you. Look at the size of the bait. Greedy so and so. That bait one. That bait only went down two minutes ago, I'll just send that back. Dogfish! The next fish to find its way to the boat was a little baby conger eel. Again on that same bait, that one that I've just chucked back out, that, that cart and squid one. We notice how it's got like a black tinge on top of it. You can tell that's a young'un. These ones here, believe it or not, will grow up to over a hundred pounds. This one, two pound. And another one. Could be his little brother, couldn't it? A bit of a scar on his tail. You seen look? This one's easier hooked. You see that hooked right in the bottom jaw. Stacks of little congers. Oh, another one pecking at the back again. Yet another dogfish. On that same bait. It's hard to deny, isn't it, the catch ratio difference between using cart and using mackerel. There you go. That same cart and squid baits had three fish. Whoop. Come on, where's that big fat cod? <laughs> There's a reason why they call them unicorns on the south coast now. <laughs> well, all hell broke loose then. Not only have I got a conger eel on here. But I couldn't turn the camera on quick enough. Fish have just come on the feed now. Right, get myself sorted. Get this rod out of the way. The first rod. Just busy dealing with that. First things first. First rod. Clean him off a bit. Look at that. That is the best part of. It won't go doubles, it might be eight. That is a decent sized rough ground bullhus. Just anger and aggression, aren't they? The size of his head and them teeth. 
again cat and squid bait so that same bait that I threw out get out now go size them teeth just angry isn't he look we'll drop him down we'll have a we'll have a proper look at him in a second but what i will deal with is i will deal with this conger eel put my glove on so yeah i had a bite on i was casting one rod out one rod went put the rod down one one fish in other rod was pulling off its side Whoa. There you go, that's my bay. I don't know, is it five pound? Little conger eel. Another reefy one. Can you hear how he's rasping? They don't have big sharp teeth, they just have like little tiny ones, but they rasp like crazy. That's how they cut through line. Come on, open up. What you need to do is you need to be able to get round the bend of the hook to be able to tee bar off. Small eels like this are the hardest ones to unhook. Right, there's one fish released. There he is. Down he goes. Right, well I've been clearing down. I've got a massive runner tide now and I don't know if you can see but it's <laughs> it's getting a little bit glum. We've got some dark clouds on the horizon behind the camera. And I've got quite a way to steam. So all I keep catching is these guys. I thought to myself I'm not even gonna turn the camera on if it's a dogfish. I've had five more dogfish since the last one and I'm gonna call this the last one. All they're doing is they're just absolutely, look, they're just mullering the baits. And they're, uh, to be honest, it's good quality bait. I don't want to waste it on dogfish. I'll have to get the tweezers on this guy as well. Yeah, it's been, um, it's a new place for me. I've not anchored this this area of reef before so it was um, right it was good for me for that anyway if nothing else I hope the little bit of underwater footage has come out all right because not only will it show me what the seabeds like I think it's gonna be I know that there's areas of reef I know it's areas of rock but I've picked this area here in the middle I'm hoping it's either gonna be sand or it's gonna be little pebbles the reason I picked this was so I could get my anchor down into it These dogfish just do not help themselves. If you can get the T bar down and around the bend of the hook, you can pull the hook out. Like that. There. The size of the bait that that dogfish has taken. Greedy, greedy, greedy. Yeah, that was all the rigs were today. It was some variation of a sliding ledger rig. As simple as you can get. And all I was doing was I was either using a Muppet or I was using a little bit of loamy tubing here, just as a bit of added abrasion resistance. Baits today were mackerel, squid and cart. And the cart and squid baits outfished everything, probably four to one. You would like to think so considering it's four times more expensive. <laughs> I will tidy up. I'll leave this last bait out. If we catch anything else, I will show you. If I don't, then I won't. Um, 
like I say, if you're interested to know how I anchor up, there is, an, there is a video on the channel already showing you the basics of anchoring a boat and also uh, how to anchor a wreck. That's, that's, that's good, that. Um, sadly, we didn't catch any big cod. Caught one small one, but it was too small for me to keep. It was about bang on legal size, but they're not big enough. Until they're about four or five pounds, they're not worth keeping. Lovely, lovely ballon wrasse earlier on, orange with white spots, and a, a real big bull huss as well. Just most of the stuff was small today. Really lovely morning coming out in that eerie fog. And uh, it's nice to just be out, isn't it? I hope you've enjoyed joining me. All the very best, and I will see you later.